Okay, so artificial intelligence has been a topic as of late that everyone is talking about. Everybody is grappling with the implications of making a thinking thing. And the, the, the key idea of how we create these neural nets, the way we mimic the mind, the way we basically synthesize consciousness is creating something that works like our neurons. We call it a neural net. Basically, it's an algorithm that can learn. And then we feed it training data. So the key idea is that it's all about the training data. The more training data it has, the more it starts to build some kind of knowledge base that we think birth some kind of metacognition, some kind of self-awareness, like an algorithm that knows, right? Like an actual synthetic mind. And so it's all about the training data, the training data, the training data. But what I think potentially um, continues to separate us from whatever synthetic minds we make, whatever kind of thinking we are forging through large language models by feeding them training data mathematically or logarithmically or in whatever form they're downloading this training data, I still think that the one training data they're not getting is the training data that rich human minds get through storytelling. Like the training data of a large language model is not the same thing as being read Moby Dick or reading Moby Dick or watching The Godfather or watching Oscar winning films or reading great works of literature. That kind of training data, the training data downloaded through storytelling, both oral and written and cinematic storytelling, that is what creates a mind that thinks in through lines and stories and myths. Our inner life looks like a story, thinks through the prism of a story, decoheres the world through the template of storytelling. Whereas these large language models are synthesizing responses to our questions that mimic our thinking, but really work more like a calculator punching numbers. Their training data reduces the modern myths of man into fucking integers, you know? And so it's crazy that it looks like us and it talks like us and it responds in ways that seem to exceed us, but it's ultimately reducible to training data that's, that's ones and zeros versus like the embodied auditory and visual experience of like beholding a story downloading a narrative through a thinking human mind, interpreting storytelling and the way that that patterns our neurons. And so I guess that's really the question of artificial intelligence ever really being something that's genuinely sentient. If it doesn't think in story, it's just a really good simulation. If it, if it can form its own opinions, then is it even worth it, like considering intelligent? You can almost make the argument of Goodwill Hunting, the scene on the bar where the guy's just regurgitating facts. From sure. Books, and he comes in like, are you just going to tell me facts or are you just going to come up with something, uh, some opinions of your own? Fair. To impress this girl. Fair. If you want to impress me, come with something more original. No, that's a great, that's a great metaphor that, 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 that uh, a glorified bookworm. Yeah that just memorizes the poetry because it was downloaded to them like a bunch of integers or a bunch of facts is not the same thing as a poet forged in mythic storytelling. Exactly. Werner Herzog says the same thing. He says like, if you just want facts, if you want training data, just open the phone book. It's full of facts, but it doesn't illuminate. What he's interested in is ecstatic truth the truth of myth and lore and storytelling and poetry and rhapsodizing and music, the felt reality of immediate experience, our storytelling prowess, our myth making and, and oratory, you know, like without that, without narrative, it's not us. It's just not a human consciousness. And um, it's an interesting debate to have these days, especially because these large language models are kind of acting like a blue genie. You know, you do rub the magic wand and you say, generate me an image of a cat, make him happier, make him a chef, make him dance, make him do this. The other day I asked a large language model to generate me a visual of a tesseract, you know, a, a cube that unfolds in four dimensions. And then I was like, now draw a bunch of astronauts flying towards the tesseract and then put like an image of a black hole behind them. And as I speak, so it becomes. So. 
are coupling with these large language models, that's really what I'm interested in. The spiritual cyborg is the, the human mind that merges with a neural net engine that can generate anything representational at will. It's us that makes it real. We enchant it with our animism. We summon it with our language. We invocate it. But these large language models are engines of invocation. They are tools that allow us to create as we speak, so it becomes. And it's less, I'm less interested in whether these are really thinking things and more the ways in which they are tools, like a bicycle of the mind, like Steve Jobs said. And like the, it's really us. It's really, it's really like an extension of the hand that says, I'm going to draw the thing, and the thing just becomes manifest. It's the extended drawing hand. You know, and then we engage in a feedback loop with that neural net, with the extended drawing hand that becomes like an Escher drawing, where you have the hand that's drawing the hand that's drawing the hand. And so now we're in a co-evolution kind of coupling with these thinking machines. And, and really, the human being is becoming a thing where the imagination is summoning its own literalization. Whatever animism, whatever agency allows us to conjure up thoughts and, 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 and speak things into being, and we used to build things into being, now we speak things into being, the large language model manifests it visually in the world, and eventually we'll manifest it in 3D. And when we start patterning fucking atoms with nanotechnology, when that reaches escape velocity, it'll be like we can and render material transformations in the world in the same way that we make a prompt in our large language model. It's going to be like, fix the, fix the illnesses we have, reprogram our biology, generate perfect physiological health, and it'll generate it using our, our, our genes and our atoms in the same way that ones and zeros now generate whatever it is that we're prompting. You understand? I mean, it's kind of amazing. Bring in the music. Bring in the music. This is what's happening to humanity right now. As we imagine, so it becomes. What began with music, poetry, dance, storytelling, authorship, beautifying reality, through patterning and song, the thing that was born of us is now reaching escape velocity. That is a kind of wild idea that the singularity will be like the film La La Land when they're slow dancing in the skies, you know? And it's like we bring the large language model along and we say, draw me a sky, draw me stars. Let me fly through the stars and let the soundtrack play around me and generate my dream girl and make it poetic and cut it like a movie and it all just makes manifest instantaneously. So think Mahina, bro. That's, I think, the destiny of man. Fuck this mortality shit, bro. Huh?